Batman Ninja has destroyed the game of Weiss Schwartz on a fundamental level as we know it. My name is Connor, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Now, in all honesty, um, Batman Ninja comes out in like a day, uh, and normally I would wait to do this video on Top 10, but um, there's some really crazy stuff in this set, and most people probably haven't even like seen the full set spoiler yet. So I want to go ahead and put this out there before all the, like, doom and gloom the world is over comes about. Because uh, it's already kind of starting to get there. And um, there, there may or may not be a ban list slash errata stuff happening because of this. I don't know. I personally don't think it's super necessary, but um, let's just get into this and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right, so my top ten for Batman Ninja. Uh, and I apologize for some of these scans. They were done a little hastily. Um, they should still be good quality, but they're going to have some like weird cropping and stuff. So I apologize. Uh, so my number ten card is Harley Quinn Bombs Away. This is a 2-2-65, two, two, gains 1,000 for each other villain. And on play, if you have four or more other villain, you can choose a villain in your waiting room and put it into your stock. Uh, this is effectively like a 2 one ten five two 2 soul which is really good rate. Um, obviously, it's just a level 2. It's not impacting your entire game. But this is a really good rate level 2, um, especially when the villain deck also has the Joker early play. You can very reasonably be fielding multiple um, like two soul attackers for less than 4 stock, um, which is kind of like par for the course nowadays. Uh, so that is pretty good. Um, so if you're putting Joker in, and he's cantripping, and you're playing this, um, it's pretty good. Like, unfortunately, like, the, there weren't any broken, like, early play packages or anything like that, um, of the traditional sort in this set. Uh, keyword of the traditional sort. Um, so, something like this for the villain deck I think is really good. It helps them stay on par at level 2, uh, get your, like, two soul beats in, uh, and this is, like, this is just a good card. 10-5 is big for a 2-1. It's really big for a 2-1. Um, this also just gives you, like, a great thing to have on board with, like, anti-change counter in hand, sort of defending it. Um, so you can just field it wall up. Really generic card, but I think it's deserving of a number 10 spot. Moving to number 9, I have Catwoman Back to the Present. Uh, so this is on play, gains 500 times the number of weapon characters you have, and act, discard a climax. This gains 1,000 and on reverse draw one. Uh, this is on here because... Weapon didn't get discard out. <laughs> as unfortunate as that is, I don't think this card would normally make a top 10 list, but I, I do think this is the best version. Like, this act ability has appeared on many cards. There's like a Sayaka and Madoka with it, and a couple other things. Um, I think this is the best version, right? Because it's costless, and it gains like a billion power on play. So this thing is reasonably like 75, 8k, um, which is much bigger than they normally get. And it gives you a discard out. Um, that also draws into cards. And, yeah, like, that's, that is plenty fine. Uh, also, being a discard out, that's like, you can discard your climax before attack phase, then if you refresh during attack phase, it goes back in and you still get your draw off of it. It's pretty cool. Um, and there's a couple top ends and weapon that have gate climaxes, which tend to stuff your hand with too many climaxes. Um, and this gives you a way to discard them which is pretty good, because they don't have that otherwise. Moving to number 8, I have Poison Ivy Turning Tables. A lot of people were upset with this card when it was revealed, and I don't really know why. Um, obviously, stuff like Marika Counter Anti-Change exists at level 1, and like the Fate Anti-Change exists at level 1, and Nico Anti-Change. So like those are really good 1-0 Anti-Changes. Um, this is a 1-1 Anti-Change, but like... 2-1 anti-changes with this exact cost C play. So this is just, this is a thousand power smaller, but you gain the benefit of if your opponent hits two first, you still threaten this, right? Whereas normally, like, say you were Sword Art with, like, Gilbert Counter or something. If you're Sword Art at level one, your opponent can just early play and they don't care because you can't anti-change with Gilbert while you're at level one. This threatens that earlier. So even if you, like, pressure your opponent, they still don't just get free early plays. And I think that's really relevant. 
Um, I don't think the, the thousand power was really what you were playing anti change counter for anyway. Um, so I think this is a really strong anti change counter and like potentially worth trying to splash into weapon builds um, because there are a couple of like non trait restricted ways to get it uh, in those decks. Uh, even though we weapon does have its own anti change, it's a discard two on a two one twenty five. Um, but I think this is potentially worth trying to fit into weapon decks. And obviously it goes in Villain. Uh, number 7 is the level 3 Two-Face. Uh, so this is Moeka from Steins Gate, uh, for those of you that are familiar with that card. Uh, on play, you heal 1. And auto, when this card attacks, if you have another Villain, pay 2, discard 1, reveal the top card of your deck. If it's a Villain character, deal X damage to your opponent, and this gains 2k until end of turn. X is equal to that character's soul. Um, you do have these sort of like unfortunate part here where you're not a um, like you don't have an event to hit on, where Moeka had the uh, like one zero event I think it was that dealt one even if you flipped that. But I don't think this deck is like running super heavy into events anyway. So you're just missing on climaxes. Um, pay two ditch one's a little hefty, but this is a good off climax finisher I think. Um, it just gives you an option in the deck. And it heals, so that's pretty decent. Uh, number 6, we have zero, 0 Harley Quinn, and I forgot to delete a Fukajiro on there. Yeah, I apologize for that. That one slipped through. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing down there. Uh, so we have Harley Quinn. Uh, as you can see that I made this in a rush, because like, that's not out yet. Um, this is on play, pay 1, clock 1, search your deck for, level, for a cost 0 or lower villain level equal to or lower than yours, put it on any position of stage, shuffle your deck. So this is the like Sora and Shiro zero, or the Saber of Black zero. Uh, you don't get on play effects, but thankfully villain's level one combo is when you play a climax, not when he's played. So this sort of fixes the issue that Sora had, where you wouldn't get the power if you like rickied it onto board. Um, and when your other villain character attacks, this gains thousands, so sometimes you can use this to kill things early, I guess, if you do end up playing this at zero. Um, that text isn't super relevant, but this is a plusing clock cost of zero that gets you your Joker combo, uh, which is really good. Uh, moving on, where we don't have Fukaji Room, we have Red Hood. Uh, Red Hood level three is during your turn plus five hundred for each other weapon character. Uh, on play, draw one, and this gains two K until end of turn. Uh, and we have uh, when this card's battle opponent becomes reversed, pay two, discard two, deal five. So this is a uh, this is your off climax one of your off climax finishers for the weapon deck, uh, alongside the trial deck Batman. Uh, drawing one and gaining two K means you're reversing fairly often, except you have like thirteen five before anything else. Um, deal five is large, unfortunately. Um, so you do have, kind of have to be careful with this, but it's it's your off climax thing. It's strong for sure. It can trips. Um, yeah, I think this is, like, you're generally trying to follow this up, like, after your opponent's done their finisher turn or whatever. Um, this deck does want to be very aggressive, so... Um, hopefully, like, you're hitting them to three, and then they're hitting you, and then you're trying to finish, close the game out. Um, there's not much this deck can do, though, about five being too big. Um, but card's, card's pretty good anyway. See, his flavor text is, I'll give you the first shot. He really wants you to, like, push him to three with your finisher, so you're decompressed. Number four, we have Catwoman, Reliable Ally. Uh, this is a Brainstorm. It's literally Remy Storm. Uh, it's also in Card Capture Sakura. Climax phase, give a character 500 power, and self-tap, salvage Brainstorm. Um, this is good because it's not trait restricted, so you can get the Poison Ivy anti-change off of it. You can get, like, I don't know. There's You can splash, like, random villain cards and grab them. I don't... <laughs> I haven't looked into it deep enough to know if there's any worth grabbing. This card is kind of just the best brainstorm in the set anyway, so congrats, it gets fourth place. Um, but the uh, it does open up potential for like mixing traits a little bit, and um, it's generally just efficient altogether. All your combos in this deck are like on reverse for the most part, so giving 500 matters. Number three. We have Bat Clan of Hida. There's four arts here. I only scanned one because I'm not sitting there and scanning all four arts. You can put any number of cards with the same name as this into your deck. 
That text usually doesn't make top ten lists. Auto. When your other character with Batman and its card name is Frontal Attack, you may pay the cost if you do return that character to your hand. So this is like... JC Shinobu, or... I don't know if this has seen play in English. Persona 5 has this profile. Um, something else, I'm pretty sure, has this profile. Uh, this is really good in this deck. Because it enables tri-laning pretty easily. And all of your combos need to reverse. So if you deny your opponent from crashing, you deny reverses, A, first off. That's pretty good. And you set up your own reverse targets, which is, spoiler alert, also really good. Um, also lets you reuse on play effects, which this deck has, like the card you're going to see next. Uh, it lets you reuse, like, your climax combo at level 1. So you can combo off, bounce it back to hand, and then play it again to combo again the next turn, because your opponent can't crash. Um, just generally good things like that. This card is going to be very powerful. And you can play, like, 8 of it. Or 12 of it, or 20 of it. Who cares? You play a billion if you want. You can play 40... 42 reasonably, 50 if you try hard. Um, you should play 50, you don't have any targets though, so that's, that's a little unfortunate. Second place, Sengoku Batman. Uh, on play, mill 2. If there's a climax, choose a character, give it 1500. Uh, on play, pay 1, clock yourself, choose a weapon character in your waiting room, return it to your hand. This card is everything Krista wished it could be. It grabs any trait character, not level 1 or lower. And it has targeted power pump on a mill two. Wow. This card, you're probably wondering right now, wow, why isn't this the best card in the set? Why isn't this the best card in the set? This card is a double rare. This card pluses. This card mills for free. This card can power pump your reverse combos. Like, mm. Mm, this card's good. Like, n n not even joking. This is like the on play pay one clock one salvage that every deck probably wishes it had. Um, and I think that's really cool for Batman to get. Uh, that being said, there is one card in this set that's actually better than this. Um, actually, just bonkers card Gorilla Grodd decoy. Uh, so, this is a common. Yeah, nice. Nice. Common. This is actually the first video I've made where number one was not a double rare. Um, so, auto. Pay one, return this to your hand. When this card is frontal attack, you may pay the cost. If you do, choose up to one Batman infiltration in your hand and put it on the stage position that this card was on as the defending character. This is Rune from Tolovaru Volume 2, which, unfortunately, we never got in English. That was Tolovaru's plusing zero. It's probably your plusing zero in this deck. Instead of, like, Runner. Because this is probably better than Runner. Because this j just can't get reversed and lets you try field, right? Um, you're probably wondering, what does it put in play from hand? Well, there's also a common, 1065. If you have one or less characters on backstage, this cannot attack. And all of your other characters cannot side attack. And it's a 65. So that's it's over spec, right? You're like, cool, I can put a 1065 over spec in play at level 0. You know what else you can put in play at level 0? A 3-2-10k that heals and does nothing else. Because someone decided that it was a good idea to print the demo deck card with the same name. <laughs> like... Cool. Uh, this is... this is new. This is cool. I don't think this is broken on a power level. Something fundamental here is just gone, like... Any, everything we knew about this game is just out the window at this point. But, man, this is really good. This is really good. I, uh, like, this is why we're playing Batman now, boys. <laughs> this is why we're playing Batman now. I don't think it makes the deck unstoppable, right? Like, obviously, the, the deck has to do other things besides have a gorilla that turns into a Batman. Uh, this, this is really good. This is really good. Level 3 is at level 0 that heal. That's delicious. Uh, so here's my top 10, right? Some of these cards seem kind of mediocre. They're kind of like context-based, right? Like, 
this is good. The Harley's good, like in the context of the villain deck. The Catwoman is good because weapon just doesn't have discard outs. Uh, but I think these are a pretty solid top ten. In my opinion, might change slightly. Like they usually do. Um, once I get to actually play the set some more, kind of just wanted to put this video out because holy smokes, Gorilla Grodd is bonkers. Card is really like even disregarding the level three thing. It's a pay one. Return this to hand, right? So you deny reverses, you plus for one stock. You just play him and attack again next turn. If you are playing the 1 0, you get to put the 1 0 in play and maybe just dome someone. Uh, return triggers don't actually mess with you because you just put the Gorilla Grod back on the board and they bounced your like, trap target back to hand. So you just change into it again. Cool. Um, yeah, this is my top 10. Sample deck list, I don't actually have put together yet because it's like 4.45 in the morning. And we don't even have scans. Um, it's like JK won't have theirs up until tomorrow. I don't think Strictly has scans up. So, yeah. Uh, I'll have a deck list video once that happens. And once I actually get to play the set. I haven't gotten to play the set a whole ton yet. Um, this top 10 is kind of theoretical. And a little bit of playing I've gotten to do. Uh, and talking with other people. So yeah. Meta placement, however. I'm going to start adding this to the videos because I think this is kind of relevant. Uh, where do I think this falls on my tier list? Um, well, as long as things stay the way they are, this entire deck is actually pretty functional and pretty strong. And Gorilla Grodd is a broken card as it is right now. And Bat Clan is also really good. This is like a just really heavy reverse denial deck that has pretty decent early plays and finishers. And has plusing triggers. So I have it in A plus right now. Um I'm not a hundred percent sure if that's right, but like my brain doesn't think Gorilla Grod lets it go lower than that as it stands right now. Um, if the 3-2 does get hit in some way, then this is like a, a tier, probably. Like, the deck is still really good, I think. Um, you have a lot of, like, efficient plusing in this deck. And your top end is more than reasonable. Uh, which I didn't even talk about top end in here, because we just had, like, really cool cards to show off for all of our top 10. Uh, but you have, like, a restander. Um, that doesn't have to reverse. And you have a restander that does reverse, but doesn't need a climax. And you have the burn 5. In the weapon deck. The villain deck has, like, seen on. Which is also, spoiler alert, good. Like, there's an A deck, A tier deck that plays it. Um, so yeah, like, I think this is A plus as it stands, A if there's, like, an errata. Um, yeah. Batman... Did not disappoint. Did not disappoint. Thanks for watching. Um, like I said, I will have the deck list video. Uh, I'll probably make like a part two or whatever with deck lists. Um, maybe like Monday, Tuesday. Might be next week if it takes me a little longer to uh, oh, oh no, uh, get time to do that. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, check me out YouTube, Twitter, Roy Schwartz Global Community, and Discord. Uh, so yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.